Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, au nom du gouvernement du Canada, je, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à cet événement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this event. My name is Michel Doiron. I am the Assistant Deputy Minister for Service Delivery for Veterans Affairs Canada, and I will be the Master of Ceremonies today. Um, I would like to recognize in the audience today the Honorable Kent Hare, Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of uh, National Defense, Giri Hutchins, the Member of Parliament for Na uh, for Long Range Mountains, I just got that wrong, huh? Charlotte Bastien, the, the Regional Director General, way at the back, uh, responsible for all her field operations, and Lee Marshall, some of you may actually know, who is the manager responsible for Cornerbrook. Uh, the Honorable Kent Hare and MP Hutchins will deliver remarks. Uh, following the presentations, there will be an opportunity for uh, photos, uh, which will take place at the end of uh, the event. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite uh, MP uh, Hutchins to come and a few words. Thank you, Michelle. So good morning, folks. What a wonderful day in God's country in the Long Range Mountains. Also like to acknowledge Mayor Pender is here and Honorable Jerry Byrne. Nice to have my provincial colleagues here, representatives from the RCN. We are in C, Grantville Campus, of course, our wonderful friends here, and friends, and my dear friend whom I'm about to introduce. It is my honor to introduce my colleague, but more importantly, a good friend who's become a great friend the last seven months. I've learned this business is all about relationship building, and I'm honored to build a fine one with this man here. He's someone who's an honorable cantaire, very honorable. He's Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defense, as Michelle said. But I admire this man so much. He has accomplished a great deal for someone who was dealt such a devastating blow at a very young age. On October the 3rd in 1991, Minister Hare was a victim of random violence. After a drive-by shooting in Calgary, he was left a paraplegic, paralyzed from the chest down, with limited use of his arms and hands. Before he was shot, Kent was an outgoing, promising junior hockey player. He had plans to become a physical education teacher. Fast forward almost 25 years, and we all know how that life book changes. So he has a new chapter with a new law degree behind him, and the next thing you know, he's sharing his life with Canadians and working on files that are important to Canada's veterans. But before winning his federal seat in Calgary at the last election in October, and being named Canada's Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defense, Kent had already built a productive life that involved an awful lot of giving back to his community. He took a role of Alberta representative for National Education Association of Disabled Students, and he eventually became president. He won two provincial elections as, as Alberta Liberal MLA for Calgary Buffalo and served there from 2008 to 2015. He is constantly out and about, whether it's Alberta or Ottawa or Stephenville we saw yesterday or today in Cornerbrook, lending an empathetic ear to all those fortunate to cross his path. And we saw last evening at supper at Jungle Gyms here in Cornerbrook, he still chatted to everybody in the room. As a government, we have kept Minister Hare very, very busy. In his first eight months of office, he's traveled the country talking about Budget 2016, but more importantly, how Budget 2016 is improving the financial security and well-being of veterans across our great nation. He's chair of the Ad Hoc Committee on Northern Alberta Wildfires. And just yesterday, he returned from France, where he participated in the ceremonies marking the 100th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme and Beaumont Hamel. So excuse him if he's looking a little jet lagged today, but I think he looks pretty good in his seal vest. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a big, warm West Coast welcome to my friend and colleague, the Honorable Cantier. Well, thank you so much for that kind introduction, Goody, and I can tell you, uh, you have a great member of parliament here uh, representing this fine region of the country. I can tell you, it uh, wasn't that I was, uh, I think I was named Minister of Veterans Affairs all of about uh, two days when Goody came in and told me about the uh, fine people of this region as well as the need for a Veterans Affairs office, and I think it's a uh, no uh, small coincidence uh, that we're here today. It's a result of a lot of her hard work and effort that she's done. But honored guests, 
veterans. It is a great, good morning. It's great to be back in Newfoundland and Labrador. What, I was here just over a month ago for the Royal Canadian Legion Dominion Convention. I was overwhelmed by the beauty of the place and the warmth of everyone I met. I'm particularly pleased to be in Cornerbrook. Today is hugely symbolic for several reasons. I've just returned from leading the official Government of Canada delegation to France to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamel. And my initial impressions of this fine province and the great people of it have been firmly reinforced during my travels with the five veterans from Newfoundland and Labrador and four of your incredibly talented youth. Everywhere I went in France, there was a trough of Newfoundland and Labrador people there. At the Menin Gate, I was greeted by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who had made the pilgrimage to France to remember the fallen sons of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. At the sacred Beaumont Hamel Memorial Site, about 3,000 joined us, many Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, to mark the 100th anniversary of this tragic battle. Some of your most respected sons, retired General Rick Hiller and Senator George Furley, were there and throughout our time in France, your youth, commemor your youth delegates commemorated Canada's fallen war dead with respect, dignity, and grace. I look at these young people and see that your future in this province is in very, very good hands. So it is, in a, it is an honor and privilege to get back to the rock. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been looking forward to this day since I was sworn in as a Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defense. Sydney, Saskatoon, Brandon, Thunder Bay, Kelowna, Windsor, Charlottetown, Prince George, and of course, Cornerbrook. We promised to reopen these offices. Our Prime Minister tasked me with getting it done. In my mandate letter, we have worked hard to make it happen as quickly as possible. And I'm very proud to stand before you today, just three months after securing funding for these offices in the federal budget to say we are once again open for business in Cornerbrook. Yeah. From today forward, veterans and their families will once again receive in-person services from my department. Speaking of that face-to-face -face service, we are hiring more case managers and frontline staff to better support the men and women who have served. Our new case managers will ensure that veterans have a more successful transition to civilian life, which each serving an average of 25 individuals. This is a worldwide best practice that we are following. When I was appointed as minister, that number was closer to 40 to 1. It's hard for a veteran with complex needs to feel that they are getting individual care and attention when their case manager has too many files. So we are fixing that. We are keeping our province, promise, promise to provide veterans and their families with the support they need where and when they need it. I am working closely with my colleague, Minister Judy Foote, another great Newfoundlander, and her department, Public Services and Procurement Canada, to ensure that we can open all the remaining office locations as quickly and efficiently as possible. We are proud of opening this office here today, but that is just the beginning. The Prime Minister gave me an aggressive mandate to do better for Canada's veterans in the areas of financial security and independence, education 
and employment opportunities and mental health and physical well-being. That's why Budget 2016 invested $5.6 billion in moving veterans' lives forward. The earnings loss benefit, which provides financial support to a veteran as he or she undergoes physical rehabilitation, vocational retraining and counseling, will increase significantly. We also made a major investment in the Career Impact Allowance, which compensates for the impact that an injury has on a veteran's career advancement opportunities in the long term. The third benefit to get an overhaul in Budget 2016 is the Tax-Free Disability Award, which recognizes the pain and suffering a service-related disability has on one's life. Currently, the maximum disability award payment is just over $300,000 and will be raised to $360,000, a number that is in line with the Veterans Ombudsman's recommendations. We deliberately package these improvements together to help veterans and their families get ahead. My, their, their life to ensure that no one falls through the cracks. When military service is prematurely ended, we are determined to do all we can for our courageous men and women who have served. Over the past week, I've learned so much more about the extraordinary sacrifices made by the sons of Newfoundland and Labrador 100 years and four days ago at the Battle of Beaumont Hamel. Over 800 men marched fear fearlessly over the top. Only 68 answered roll call the next day. It was by any measure a tragic day in the history of Newfoundland and Labrador, the consequences of which have continued to echo throughout this past century. My time spent commemorating these heroes has only strengthened my resolve to deliver on all of the commitments we made during last year's election. We've done a lot already, but there's a great deal more to be done, and I am more committed than ever to see this through. That's why I'm here in Cornerbrook. The best way to honor the sacrifices of yesterday is to deliver services that help our veterans today. It is only through treating Canada's veterans with care, compassion, and respect that we can truly say we well remember them. Thank you so much for allowing me to take part in this historic day with you all. We're returning services to veterans right here in Cornerbrook. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I would ask the Minister and Lee Marshall, Charlotte Bastien, and MP Hutchins to come forward to cut the ribbon. And we have scissors with a ribbon. We have scissors with a nice little ribbon. You're going to do the cut. I'll do the cut. Yes. Oh,